Hey everyone, Shane here with HR.com. Today I have a 2020 Subaru Outback wagon and I want to walk through how to install the DrawTight Class 3 trailer hitch receiver. When we're thinking about putting a hitch on our vehicle, we need to think about what we're going to be using the hitch for. Adding a Class 3 hitch is going to allow you a lot of different opportunities for either pulling a trailer, cargo carrier, bike rack, uh, putting different ball mounts on. Uh, put a cargo carrier on there where we can get stuff out of the vehicle, put it on the cargo carrier to make more room for our passengers. Bike rack, we're not going to have to try to load the bikes inside the car or on top of the roof. Uh, we'll be able to put them on the bike rack and make it a lot more easier, accessible for you to get your bikes off. This is what our hitch is going to look like once, it, once it's installed. You can see the receiver tube is nice and tucked up pretty far up behind the fascia, so it maintains a really nice clean look on the back of the vehicle. The cross tube uh, is visible, but unless you're down, you're really not going to see it because it's tucked up really nice up against that, that pan where your spare tire is. It's going to be a class 3 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening. So it's going to give us a lot of different options for different hitch mounted accessories. You're going to notice there's two holes here. This hole right here is going to be for our hitch pin. It's going to take a standard 5 8 hitch pin. Hitch pin and clip does not come with this hitch, however they can be found here at eTrailer.com. This hole here is for a J-pin stabilization device and this is something that uh, I really like about draw type. The J-pin also does not come with it, but what it does is it actually is going to replace your actual pin and it slides in and it has a hook that hooks in here and it pushes your hitch mount accessory over to one side tight so it takes any movement out of it. So that's a really nice feature. You notice it's also going to have plate style safety chain loops, very, very large openings. So if you have a, uh, a trailer that has some bigger hooks on it, you can see it's going to accommodate them very well. It's going to be a steel construction, nice black powder coat finish, so it's really going to help resist rust and corrosion. Now I'm going to give you a few weight capacities that help you when deciding on any of those hitch mount accessories. We're going to have a 675 pound max tongue weight, which is a downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube. So if you're putting the bike rack on, cargo carrier, or even a trailer with a lot of tongue weight, you want to make sure you're not exceeding that downward pressure. We're going to have a 4,500 pound gross trailer weight, which is going to be a trailer plus the load included. Keep in mind, if you're hauling a trailer, this hitch is not rated for weight distribution. As far as our measurements go, from the ground to the top inside part of our receiver tube is going to be 14 inches. That number, keep in mind, for any hitch mount accessories that may hang down a little bit, may require a little bit more ground clearance. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost part of the bumper is going to be about 6 inches. That number is important for any of your hitch mount accessories like your bike racks and cargo carriers that may fold up against your vehicle. You want to make sure they're not going to make contact. With all that being said, Go ahead and walk through how to get it installed. Start our installation. We're going to take a strap. We're going to hang it anywhere, really on our axle. We want to make sure we're going underneath our exhaust pipe. And tighten that like that. And we're going to come to our exhaust. We're going to have two isolators. We're going to have one here, one on the back side. And then in front of our axle, we're going to have a third one. We need to remove those and allow our exhaust to rest down a little bit or hang. So what I'm doing is I'm going to spray the hanger with some soapy water. You can use a lubricant if you have one. I find soapy water works pretty well. And then we can just take a pry bar and you notice we have a hook here that's going under our isolator. What we're going to do is we're going to take a pry bar and we're going to use that as a wedge and we're going to pry we're going to pry our hanger off. Here. So I did the same thing with this one. Then our third one's going to be right here in front of the axle. We're going to do the same thing with that one. This one, you kind of wedge against the pipe. Just like that. Then we're going to remove our heat shield. We use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the four bolts. Directions are going to tell you from this hole back two and three quarter inches. 
and then use a hole saw bit to open this up. Most people aren't going to have a hole saw bit, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from this hole to this edge, come up, over, and then out. I'm going to cut this whole section out. I'm just going to use some metal shears. The reason we have to trim is because we need to get access to this hole here. We're going to be using this hole and this rear most hole here. Once you get your heat shield trimmed, where you have access to it, you can reinstall your hardware and your heat shield. Now from here on out, everything's going to be the same on the opposite side of the vehicle. We're going to remove this plug, this plug, and this one. Use a flathead screwdriver, and we'll just pry the plug out. This hole here is going to be our access hole to get our hardware inside the frame rail to these two. We're going to start this rearmost hole. We're going to have a pull wire. We're going to take the spring in. We're going to feed it in this hole. We're going to come out this hole. You want to make sure that you don't put it in so far that the end of your wire goes up into the hole. So what I like to do is right at the end, put a little bend in it like this. That way it'll catch on the frame rail. And we'll slide this in. You may have to put your finger up in there. If you notice there's a lip, kind of help that spring go over the top of that. Now you're going to have a couple different spacer blocks. You're going to take the skinniest one, we're going to put it on the spring. And then push it up into the hole. You're going to take a carriage bolt, thread it onto the spring into the wire. Push it up in the hole. We're going to pull it out like that. We're going to repeat that same process for this one and the same thing on the other side of the vehicle. You're going to have a washer like this. We're going to take it and set it over this hole on this larger plate. And we're going to tape it on there. Take a piece of tape, stick it right to your hitch, just like this. cut the center out. I'm going to repeat that on the other side of the hitch. And we'll get an extra set of hands. We're going to raise our hitch into place. We're going to take our pull wires, feed them through the corresponding holes in the hitch. We need to go over the top of our exhaust. Hardware to pass down. And what we're going to do here, we're going to pull off one of our wires, and for now, we're just going to put a nut on each side. This is going to hold our hitch up while we install our remaining hardware. So now we have a nut on each side, hitch is supporting itself. We're going to pull off our second wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a conical tooth washer on, teeth facing towards the hitch. And then we'll add on a nut. Once we get that on, we can come back to this one, remove this nut, put our washer on, and then reinstall the nut. Once we get one side done, we repeat the process on the other. Then we'll come back with an 11 16 socket. We're going to tighten up our heart. Then we'll come back with a torque wrench and torque all of our hardware to the specifications listed in the instructions. Once you've got all your hardware torqued, reinstall your exhaust in reverse order from the way you took it off, then you're ready to go. It's going to do it for look at and installation on the DrawTight Class 3 trailer hitch receiver on a 2020 Subaru Outback Wagon.